you in a country pub I know, in the heart of rural England, where the landlord's forced moustaches, just like Jimmy Edwards and the crisps and pickled onions on the bar are numberless of the stars at night. Just about to order scampi in an Elizabethan basket when two necklace men in blazers and cravats approach our table and say, sorry, this bar is exclusively for the use of Nobel Prize winners, Latter-day Saints, people who have seen God and selected relatives of our dear Queen. And furthermore, you worm, there is mud up on your plimps holes. I reply that I'm a member of most elitist cliques you care to name and the blood which courses at an ever-increasing speed as it happens to my veins belonged once to the Cuban royal family. But they don't listen and they just pour my drink down the sink and say, this is not what we mean. In this life, one is either you or non-you and if I were you, I'd make myself bloody scarce. I even try and show them my credit cards, but I'm moved, they say. Okay, Sonny, it's time you were taught a lesson, and there's only one thing that you should understand. We're night out, we're the world of public, we're night out. across sources of yoghurt and bits of crusty farm bread. And then I could order a carafe of Asti, we could have so much fun. We could discuss things like communism and chart positions with the lack of inhibitions and separate the truly liberated from the herd. But I should mention that I talk quite loud. That's a casualty of inexpensive foreign wine and neither am I unaware of the restive noises from the party sitting close by. But as I'm in the middle of my funny story about the Arab and the unordered toilet, I can't stop now because I'm in too deep as I'm coming to the part where I say my best joke-telling voice. So the Arab says to the attendant, right? Of course, as we know, 5,000 pounds of pressure can suck out almost anything and all goes quiet and here a little girl is saying, Danny, what a horrible man. I've just made a phone call to your crypto-fascist Uncle Roger and he'll be here quite soon and make quite sure he doesn't upset any little girls or girls anymore or we're in the night out with a famous to a conference in Bath, and I believed you like a fool. Now you get up, go to the window, and you turn a pot plant round. I study a naked bottom with a twinge of lust, but I'm not twigging that something's going down. There is a sound of heavy boots upon the stairs, and the door crashes open, and in comes your dad with some faithful retainers and some ex-army mates from the Conservative Club. And I figure they must have been waiting all night because your dad is clutching two reels of infrared film and he's looking dangerously pale as he shows me the microphone under the bed. And I'm just about getting the message. Oh, it's not too groovy. I wake up, and yeah, it was all a dream. I'm really in a hospital bed. There is a smell of formaldehyde in the air, and a couple 
and doctors with swastikas on their arm are doing something to the brain of a sheep and in the corner is a huge zinc bath containing some sort of reptile and the nurse is saying be a brave boy and drink it all up and I realise I can't feel my legs and the shape of the bed is a mic shape at all and I want to 